just to kind of give a quick little um, shout out to my guy, uh, Matthew Williams at Givenchy. I thought this new collection that he put together for fall 2023 was maybe one of his best visually. I had a quick scan of it before I was starting the show and I immediately liked what I see. And I think if anything, this kind of reminds you, this kind of solidifies my point I mentioned before. I think I was speaking about the Heron Preston show at New York Fashion Week. He went back to New York Fashion Week, which was amazing because, you know, Heron Preston, I feel like, you know, his roots and what he's kind of known for are intrinsically tied to New York. So it's good to see him go there instead of kind of going where all the popular kids going to Paris. Paris, even though it's probably got more exposure and whatnot there i think that the new york collection is really amazing but one thing i didn't like about that collection that he presented in new york fashion week was that it was too and again this is coming from an avid streetwear guy right i'm the streetwear guy i love streetwear that's been my thing for ages i'll take streetwear over fashion any day of the week and it's something that i kind of hold dear to my heart and i get annoyed when i see these streetwear guys who eventually make it to the runways disavowing streetwear and saying oh streetwear wasn't really the thing i wanted to do i always wanted to do fashion and it kind of poo poo it but i feel like streetwear is to me one of the best avenues for people who actually want to make clothes to kind of get into making clothes because it allows you to kind of go in all sorts of different directions but i also respect what fashion is the capital f and i feel like runways especially fashion weeks in general should be a place to sort of like wanderlust and kind of exhibit and create and go a bit crazy or maybe just kind of you know offer something different than what you maybe do with your regular stuff and i feel like Heron Preston should probably adopt what Matthew Williams of Givenchy and especially what he's doing now with his kind of quote unquote women's wear line and just kind of offer something a little bit more interesting a little bit more fashion-esque a little bit more subtle a little bit more sleek um, than what his usual offerings are like that you kind of know are known for and I feel like that's be the best way to kind of showcase your broad range of skills and what you can kind of offer your clientele and just to kind of set the levels a little bit because I feel like the hair and press stuff is getting a little bit repetitive getting a little bit boring and I don't really think it's got that's that's its place the stuff that he presents should be in a runway like I look at hair and press and maybe similar to like Acne Studios Acne Studios what they present on the runway isn't what you get on the online store it's like two different things but it's kind of the same label so I feel like Maybe you should present that kind of streetwear stuff in a lookbook, but then on the runway, it's like, quote unquote, what you'd imagine fashion to be like. There's some, in, there's some looks of it that I like that hair person, but I feel like not in general. And I feel like this collection from, from Matthew Williams and Givenchy is a good example of how to do this, because I'm sure in store, if you still want a hoodie, if you still want a studded cap, if you still want some core cool boots, you could get it. But on the runway, he's got some great overcoats. Um, there's some great dresses there, some great dresser blazers. Um, I love the, the, the flipping mesh on the other side. The length of the sleeves is absolutely impeccable on some of these looks here. The great styling. Again, I don't know who's styling Givenchy nowadays or working with Matthew Williams, but I feel like they're doing a really good job. I think even the, the couple previous men's we chose were styled impeccably. Even some of the items were that great. I think the styling kind of helped to spruce them up really well here. You've got some really great mini skirt type esque looks looking looks here going on you got some great use of color like this look here number 11 i'm not sure if that's kai gerber and i don't know if that is her i don't think that is but no look number 11 of this show this fall 2023 look from Givenchy by President Matthew Williams is great like i don't think you'd be able to know if no one if you didn't know what brand it was i don't think you could tell if this was Givenchy maybe any of these looks maybe you would tell this but i love you to tell number 11 this is really nice very 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 well done for Matthew Williams and again I've no, I've been a long fan. I've been a long time fan of this because I feel like from the entire group of people who made it from that kind of you know school of Virgil, school of Kanye, I feel like he's the one who I feel like had the most to prove because he wasn't. He didn't necessarily. Maybe he was driving force behind Bin Trill and shit. Obviously, he did some stuff with Lady Gaga when they were together in terms of costume design. But I never really thought like he presented that or maybe gave us an inkling that he had it that he was that guy but then as soon as a leak drops you're like rah this is really good isn't it off the bat like he came out of the gate strong but then when he got into Givenchy I also felt like maybe the leaks thing the maybe heavy reliance on what you'd call streetwear or modern wear whatever casual wear it maybe would seep through and it'd be a bit too casual and of course considering what Givenchy were like and where they needed resuscitation I feel like he's done a really good job even though some of the you know fashion twitter people aren't necessarily the biggest fans of his I feel like he does get some unnecessary stick because I feel like this stuff is really strong um I love everything about it good shapes good dresses good cuts good accessories the, sh the shoes are really nice um 
this angular aggressive almost like pin arrow type design on the boots is really good the sleeve this uh, the length of the sleeves of some of these looks is really 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 nice great styling great layering there's a look here number 24 there's like maybe three or four layers on it's even the same with look 23 you got the overcoat you got some sort of bag maybe they're wearing here at the back you got a jacket or shirt with a with a kind of rumpled collar maybe it's a cat suit all together you got these great shoes like this oh, look at look number 27 that's hard as hell that's something you'd expect to see from matthew williams you've got this great layering you've got this kind of like an amazing texture thing he does on his jeans kind of reminds you of what you know john jacashi did with these undercover scab pants and shit um you've got some great little hardware details here on the side hanging off you know coats with hoodies and shit this is a quintessential like basically matthew williams look this might be his muse essentially but then the rest is really different you know what i mean I love everything about this. Really, really nicely done. There's like a re-engineered, what's that look like? A baseball jacket of some sort here. Same here. This kind of reminds me, a little weird to say, but this sort of reminds me of like a Sean John look, number 30. There's like a collection, maybe one of his collections they did on the runway. There's like a look like this, I think, off of Sean John. And I'm just thinking, maybe also, maybe it's Tom Ford. I'm not really sure. Imagine me, imagine me confusing Sean John and Tom Ford. And then, so it starts off very, very um, surprising, like you wouldn't expect from Matthew Williams. And it kind of ends in stuff that you would expect Matthew Williams to be making in terms of these kind of com cargo -y type pants that he has going on here with the hardware bits hanging off of them. I think they look like bondage pants a little bit or parachute, or to, sorry, like an O to maybe Vivian Westwood um, and that sort of nod to her, but they look really well done. Look at these glasses and these bits of jewelry, the use of green. And again, it's a different sort of hue from the Bottega green. It's sort of like a little bit more washed out. Um, I love that a little bit more dyed out, the color palettes. Like, look at these shapes, man. This is really good. Matthew Williams is getting better and better. And again, this is the key to it because he's got the youth in his hands. He's got the cultural zeitgeist there. His fingers on the pulse. He's in the mix. He's young. Give the guy time and he'll eventually put together a good collection. It'll good to give a good concise collection and show growth. And look at this. No theatrics, no craziness on the runway. Just a well-lit cube and loads of amazing pieces walking down a catwalk. This over, wow, let me look, there are 50, 60. Jesus Christ, so many good collections here. So many good looks here overall. And of course, you see my feelings at the end there with his kind of signature um, buy thing that he does now with the two flipping, with the peace sign there. I feel it's great overall. I'm, I'm a fan of it all. Um, I love it quickly read over the review see what he's saying it says that Givenchy is given one of the big five in the canon of French of fashion sorry French fashion but unlike Chanel's societally trailblazing menswear appropriation Dior's epoch shift okay too many blabbering here until January's menswear show Matthew M. Williams efforts to mesh his design and identity with that of the opaque house profile were mostly thwarted first by the COVID house um sorry Firstly, by the COVID's cause and possibility of connecting with the audience of his collection, then by over elaborate collections that were too bombastically presented and thereby rainstorm. Now, however, he seems to have struck upon an effective recipe through which appetizingly blend himself with the house that Hubert built. Today's show again took place in the Ecole Militaire, um, pleasingly closed and focused in Givenchy's white box. It repeated elements of January's menswear formula while adding fresh women's wear specific elements, again, with the um, open with the baseline of wasted coat tailoring. Well, it's a black coat terrier, sorry, um, which some looks of one to five was crafted in the couture atelier. The, okay, that's interesting. So some of this was done by the couture. Okay. Um, defining elements were generous box pleats and back and two inward facing button down pleats running down each side of the jacket or coats. These are totally created different faded and favors and then came two leather bouncer jackets, one black, one purple, that the paradigm pieces of his Williams 2.0 face of Chivon Shi. Let's see what other things he says. Quotes. Let's see, you've got quotes from him. Do you speak at the back here? What did he say? Um, but, but, but let's see what, you, what he actually said himself. A printed fabric overlaid mesh dress with a gated, um, with a gathered neckline was Williams conceded possibly an inadvertent echo of Gianni Versace's design language. All respected the greats for sure. Um, some more did the post. Okay, he said that. What else you say? Not many comment, comments from him directly. He says here, sitting front row alongside Jared Leto, now several stops into his post Gucci tour was Karen Reutfeld, who has been consulting with Williams and Givenchy on women's wear. No wonder it was so good then, huh? That little bit of panache, a little bit of refinement. If anything, even the hair and makeup is very Kareem Reutfeld, isn't it? Interesting. It says, said Williams of Interaction, 
Um, we have a dialogue about making desirable clothes. I'm so inspired by women around me and, you know, spending so much time with Kareen. She understands the house so well. We literally just talk about clothes. With Royfield, Williams is shaping a Givenchy women's identity that contains multi-generational, continent-striding multitudes. I love this, man. That's a great marriage, isn't it? Maybe he needed that. That's what he needed. Just that muse, that sounding board, that bit of insight, that little bit of chic. Because that's one thing about Karen Ruffo. She's a very chic woman, right? Very good looking, very well put together. An older lady that's kind of got a finger on a pulse. And somebody that's the old, but also got a young heart as well. Um, loads of experience and whatnot. Like that would be a great person to kind of marry up with. So whoever did that and pulled her in, in general, did a great job. That's a really, really good idea. But yeah, enjoyed everything about it. Um, Givenchy for 2023 ready to wear. Check it out if you haven't already before. Definitely, definitely one of my favorites so far that I've seen. Big up Matthew M. Williams for proving the doubt was wrong and also being one of my favorites.